وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به وارحمون إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنذر نفس ما قدمت لغد فاتقوا الله إن الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran that I will be left in the Shaitan al-Rajim لَقَدْ كَانَ لِسَبَعِنْ فِي مَسْكَنِهِمْ آيَةً جَنَّتَانِ عَنْ يَمِينِ وَشِمَالِ كُنُوا مِنْ رِزْقِ رَبِّكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهُ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهُ بَلْدَةٌ طَيِّبَةٌ وَرَبٌ رَحُورٌ فأعرضوا فأرسلنا عليهم سيل سيل العرم وبدلناهم بجنتيهم جنتين دواتا أكل خمط وأكل وشيء من سدر قليل. Once a man came to Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. In this ayah, Allah عز وجل mentions about Saba, the people of Saba. So a person came to Prophet Muhammad sallam, and he asked Rasulullah sallam, Ya Rasulullah, what is Saba? He said, who is Saba? Uh, is it a woman or is it a place? We've heard, because Saba in Arabic, it sounds like a female name. So Prophet Muhammad sallam, he said, Saba was neither a land nor a woman. We know there is a chapter in the Quran called Saba. And from this chapter, from this surah, when we read the surah and the translation of the tafsir, we learn Allah that Allah is talking about the people of Saba. So what was actually Saba? Who was it? So Prophet he said, it was neither a land nor a woman. It was a man who had ten children, six of whom went to Yemen, and four of whom went to Asham, to where the present day Syria and uh, you know the surrounding area, the Sham area, Syria, Jordan, Palestine. This is known as the Sham area. So he said six of these ten they went towards Yemen and settled down over there, and four of them went towards Sham. Those who went Asham were Lachm, Judham. Judham, Amira, and Ghassan. And those who went south were Kinda, Al Ashariya, Al Az, Madhij, Imya, and Ammar. And, 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 and A man asked, What is, who are Ammar? Ammar. And Prophet he said, Those among whom are Kahtam and Bajila. You see that, you know, this genealogist, then they went on explaining what these tribes and what these names were and they tried to find out the roots and the uh, ancestors of these people. However, the person Saba, when it mentioned Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said there were ten children that he had. The Mufassirin explained that he was talking about ten tribes from Saba. The ten different tribes that came from the lineage of the person called Saba. He was amongst the original Arabs from Al Arab, as Prophet Sassu mentioned in another hadith. He, they were from the Arab. And they had ten different tribes. Some of them, four of them, they went towards the north in Sham, and the rest they settled in Yemen. So Saba are the people. With, 
which are also mentioned in the Quran from amongst these people, from whom there was the ancient kings of Yemen, Bilqis, the queen who met Sulaiman who was also uh, was also one of them, which is mentioned in the Quran. And the people of the Yemen, Al-Taba'aba, or the Tubba, which was the surname of the ancient kings. These were amongst the people of Saba. <coughs> so Allah Azawajal, He mentions the story of Saba, short in a short uh, and few ayahs, and it is explained, and some other ayahs explain, uh, talk about the people of Saba as well. And in this ayah which I recited, the two ayahs that I recited earlier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that these were the people, there was the tribe of Saba. In their dwelling, لَقَدْ كَانَ لِسَبَئِهِمْ فِي مَسْتَنِهِمْ آيَةً In their dwellings, Allah Azza wa Jal had placed a sign. The place that they used to live in, the places that they used to reside in, Allah Azza wa Jal had kept signs for them. And amongst the signs and the ni'mah that Allah had put for them was two gardens that Allah mentions. A god, two gardens on the right and on the left. And they were told, they were told messengers, as is explained in the tafsir, messengers were sent to such people. They were with so much tranquility and security and aman. They had so much richness and their towns were free of any diseases, any problems, any plague, any insects, even some of the or Imam just said they didn't have even problems of mosquitoes in their land. All the towns were flourishing. And especially this town that Allah is mentioning. This place where he had put between the two mountains, there was a river flowing. And on each side there were gardens. And if a woman was to go with an empty basket, would, if a woman was to pass you know the ones who collect fruit? The ones who collect fruit when the time uh, when the time is right for them to collect the food, the fruit and the other uh, produce that Allah Azza grants them, granted them. If a woman was to pass by under the tree, it is said that she would pass by under the tree and by the time she moved out of it, her basket would be full of fruits. This is how blessed they were. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, that they had barakah. And they had towns that were blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Allah Azza wa Jal commanded them through the prophets and messengers that were sent to them. And He said, eat from the provision of your Lord. Eat from the provisions of your Lord and be grateful to Him. A good land have you and a forgiving Lord. You have been given and blessed with a good place and land. A place of haman. When you go out of your house, when you travel, when we travel, for example, when we travel, a lot of times, going from one town to the other, coming from Sharjah to Dubai, or Dubai to Sharjah, or to Ajman or Abu Dhabi, we don't really have to carry with us too many, uh, you know, provisions or, or supplies to fulfill us on the journey, to take care of our needs on the journey. Because every petrol station that you go to, you find a mashallah, a very good mart, which is called a convenience store, and it's so convenient, and this is nothing but from the blessing that Allah has kept for us. That any time you're passing by, you can fill in your petrol, you can take whatever sandwiches, you know, mashallah, every petrol station has got a cafeteria and you can have different types of juices of different colors and you can have different sandwiches, you know, tikka and bikka kebab, <laughs> all kinds of foods and drinks. Reach out to the stores and you find all the drinks, from the cold drinks to the warm drinks and everything. This was the case of the people of Saba. When they used to travel from one town to the other, Allah had connected them 
and they were a people of trade. The Yemeni people, the Arabs, especially these people of Saba, they were a people of trade, and they used to frequent and, and travel often towards, uh, you know, Al-Sham for trade and come back along the way to business. And Allah is saying in the Quran that all of these towns were connected and they were blessed. And especially he talks about this town where there was a river flowing and there were gardens and this was the case of gardens that a woman was, would pass by and come out from an empty basket would come out with a full basket. This is how blessed it was, the place. And Allah Azza wa Jalla commanded them, eat and drink from it, and be thankful to your Lord, and your Lord, that this is a blessed land, and your Lord is most merciful and forgiving. This story, my brothers and sisters, is an analogy for us. It is a metaphor, it is an analogy, not a metaphor, but it's an analogy, an example that we learn from, that when Allah Azza wa Jalla blesses us, with a secure house, with secure people around you who are taking care of you, with a secure town and their leaders who are taking care and putting, you know, uh, making sure that the people are well, well equipped and well taken care of and in peace and tranquility. Look at the situations now, for example, back home where we are coming from. There are a lot of brothers here from Pakistan. Go back to Pakistan and you see what is the situation? There is hardly, in so many places, there is hardly electricity and water. You go back to the land, when you go in Africa, there was a brother, subhanAllah, he became Muslim, and we still, mashallah, you know, keep in touch with him, he keeps in touch with us. The only problems they have in their land, this, this, even, even though they have all the natural resources, they have no electricity. They don't have the basic necessities, water supply, and basic necessities of of life that they can go on and, and live with. And Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He keeps us and all the Muslim Ummah in such situation. We pray to Allah that He removes the corruption from our lands and He brings us on top of us and amongst us people who will be who will be observing the laws of Allah Azza wa Jal, who will be taking care not only of the needs of their own families and friends and their own people, but the needs of all the people in the Muslim Ummah in the land. And this is a great blessing. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, even about the Quraysh in the time of Muhammad sallallahu And what happened to the people of Sabah? Despite Allah Azza wa Jal giving them all these blessings, they used to worship Allah alone, and the blessings were preserved for them. And as soon as they transgressed the limits, and as soon as they got away from worshipping Allah, and went towards worshipping others beside Allah, and it is said in the, in the tafasir, and in the, in the explanations of these ayahs, that these people, like in the, in the case of Sulaiman salam, when the hudud, when the hudud came to Sulaiman, he, the word of God, the news to Suleiman, and he said, I have come from the people of Sabah, and I see a queen which is prevailed and is ruling them, and I see that their people, and the, and the hudhud was actually surprised. Look at this bird, Allah Musta, Allah Akbar. The bird was surprised and shocked. He was saying, what did I see, Ya Suleiman? I see that these people are not worshipping Allah, the Creator, the Sustainer, the Provider, but they are worshipping the Sun, Ashams. They are worshipping a creation of Allah. No doubt there is a huge creation as Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made an example of his people when he looked at the stars and he made them realize as a mockery for their beliefs and their practices. He said, this could be my Lord. Then the, then the stars disappeared. And he said, is this, the moon came and he said, is this my Lord? And the moon disappeared and the sun came. He said, yes, this is really big. Hada Akbar. This is great. This should be my Lord. But then the sun disappeared and became dark. He said, look at this, my people. Look at this. I am free from all the shit that you 
you commit, I'm free from all the shirk that you commit, and I only and I'm not amongst the mushrikeen. I only worship Allah. So when they, the people of Saha, went away from the worship, from this tawheed, from this purity of monotheism, when they realize, when they do something, they thank Allah. When they are in a good situation, as Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, when they are blessed, it is a strange situation of the moment. Prophet Sallallahu said it is a surprising situation. When he is blessed with blessings and with provisions from Allah Azza wa Jalla, good situation, then he thanks Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He thanks and he is happy and he makes shukr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And when and he praises him. And when he comes in a difficult situation, this movement, he again praises and thanks Allah, and then he has patience. This is the situation only for the mu'minun. This is only for the mu'minun, the believers. The believers who have a higher category than the muslimun, the ones who have just accepted Islam. So if you don't change your situation from a Muslim to a woman, then this is not for you, my brothers and sisters. Because when you come into difficulty, this is when you show your true colors. This is when you show how the ayahs of Allah don't mean anything to you. When, when your statements of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, don't mean anything to you. But your situation is over and above anything else. Your philosophy is over and above anything else. Instead of thanking Allah and looking in your surroundings and the aman and peace and security that Allah has put you in, you keep on crying over the spilled milk. You keep on crying over the broken glass. And you get nothing out of it. The glass does not come back into its place and your problem. Instead, a mu'min, he thanks Allah. He praises him, Alhamdulillah ala kulliha. Is what Prophet Sallallahu taught us. Alhamdulillah ala kulliha. And he doesn't go away from that obedience and that taqwa and that element of tawheed. That element of tawheed. And this is an element of tawheed, my brothers and sisters. Because we know even good comes from Allah and even the evil was created by Allah for several reasons. For several reasons, the wisdom behind it cannot be explained in a khutbah. The good was created from, by Allah and even the evil for many, many good reasons. Because there is nothing purely evil as Prophet has mentioned. There is nothing that is purely evil. And this is for some of the women who it is a test and it is a situation that Allah Azzawajal, He puts you in and then He sees how you take, uh, how, what actions you take from this. So these people, they started worshipping the sun and Allah Azzawajal, He said, He sent, there was a dam that was built by the ancient king in this river, in this uh, stream that was flowing between the mountains and there was greenery and fruits and produce all over the place and, and this dam was built by the ancient kings of the, of the same people of Sarah who are mentioned in the Quran who were blessed by Allah Azzawajal, and Allah tested them with all the goodness that he gave them. He tested them with all the goodness and the provisions that he gave them. And sometimes Allah Azza wa Jal, he tests us with good that he gives us, with the richness, with the money, with our children, with our wives, with our community, with our aman and peace and security. And sometimes he tests the mu'minun by some difficulties, with some difficulties. So he tested them with all these provisions and blessings. And they, instead of worshipping Allah alone, and instead of staying on the tawheed and on the monotheism, they started worshipping and begging and asking from, from the creation of Allah, from the makhluk of Allah. Instead of asking Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah, Allah Rabbi, la ushriku bihi shayya, they started asking for others. And Allah Azza wa Jal sent, he sent, a torment, a punishment on them through the same blessing that he had put for them. Through the same river and the dam which was providing water and sustenance. As Allah Azza wa Jalla, he said, that Allah Azza wa Jalla has created, all the created, all the living creatures is coming from ma, 
come from water. And the same water, which was the means of life for them, it became the means of destruction for them. It became a means of destruction for them. As Hassan al-Basri, rahmatullah he said that Allah Azza wa Jal, He never punishes the people. He never punishes the people unless they commit the sins that they have done according to their sins, unless they commit this kind of shirk or, or transgression or disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, and they go from Islam out of Islam. He never punishes people unless they do that. And we seek Allah's protection and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He keeps the Tawheed and He keeps the monotheism and He keeps the Aman and He keeps the security and He keeps the stability in the lives of all our Muslim Ummah and in this land and all the lands of Muslims. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that all our families, all our brothers and sisters who are in pain and suffering, who are in troubles within their own families and within their own communities, I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah Azza wa Jal eases those suffering and Allah Azza wa Jal replaces them with blessings and provision from Himself. In the law, I am Rabbi Ali wa Hassan, wa ita al wa in haa al fashai wa kari wa rabi, qayrum la alakum da dakarun. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى لسنة لا يوم الدين الله عز وجل he also said in the Quran to the Quraysh الذين الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف that who has fed them saving them from hunger and made them safe saving them from fear this was the condition when Prophet Muhammad also came to the people of Quraysh, just like prophets and messengers came to the people of Sabah, and they warned them. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He even tells the Quraysh, He even tells and reminds the Quraysh, that tell them Muhammad isn't He Allah who had kept them safe, and who fed them, and from hunger, and who made them safe in their land, and He made them safe from any fear, and He gave the protection from Him. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He reminds us to Ibrahim salam, who also said, and He raised His hand and He made dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, and this dua is because of which, because of one of the reasons because of which there is so much aman and security in the whole land of Arabia till today. In the, in the lands of Arabia, in the, in, the, in the continent of Arabia, because Ibrahim alayhi salam thousands of years back, this Hanifah Muslim, the one who was of pure monotheism, he asked Allah Azza wa Jal, wa qala Ibrahim, as Allah said, Ibrahim, he said, wa qala Ibrahim, Rabbi ja'al hadha baladan amina wa rzuk, wa rzuk ahlahu min al-thamarati man amana minhu billahi wa liyum al-akhir. That, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, Make this a secure city and provide its people with fruits, whoever of them believes in Allah and the last day. And that was the condition that was put by Ibrahim alayhi salam. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, whoever obeys Allah azza wa jal, and don't go away from the obedience and the worship of Allah, one, one Lord and one Ilah, and they stay firm upon this. As Allah's Messenger وسلم, he used to say, and he used to urge the people to make this dua, to make you firm and stable, because this stability is more important than doing some act which you do haphazardly on an occasion, and you do it in large quantities, and then you forget about it for years and months. Like in the case of Ramadan, from one Ramadan to another Ramadan. The Mu'mins, they observe what Prophet Sallallahu used to do. Before the Ramadan used to come, the month before the Ramadan, he used to fast like he fasted in no other month except for the month of Ramadan. He used to fast like he fasted in no other month in the whole year. So if you do something, you do it regularly and ask Allah 
Azzawajal, to keep your hearts firm upon it. To keep our hearts firm upon it. And Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi taught us, Allahumma inni ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deen. O Allah, the one who has control over the heart, Allahumma inni ya muqallib al-qulub, who is controlled. And in another hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, the hearts of people is in between two fingers of Allah Azzawajal. So we have to ask Allah Azzawajal to keep us firm, not that we come and make or sit down for half an hour, 45 minutes in the, in the, in the Masjid al Jummah and forget about learning about Islam throughout the week and then we come again to the next Jummah. Not that we come to Jummah and we stay over here, we worship Allah alone and then when we leave the Masjid, the rest of the week we worship other people. And we worship our desires. And the Adhan is being called out, but we are busy with our television, our business, our, our, our belongings, our children, our families. So ask Allah Azzawajal to make your hearts firm upon this deed, so you are regular upon it. It is better that you pray two rakahs of Sunnah before going to sleep, then you pray 20 rakahs every Ramadan, and the rest of the year you don't pray at all. 20 rakahs if people are fighting, 8 rakahs or 20 rakahs. But the rest of the year they forget about what Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah was. Only in Ramadan everybody wakes up for the Sunnah. In the middle of the night, is it 20 rakahs or 8 rakahs? So ask Allah Azzawajal to keep us firm and regular. To keep us firm and regular in our practices. And I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He makes and gives blessings from Him because of us worshipping Him alone and nobody else. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal because of the Tawheed, because of the monotheism, because of the obedience, because of us obeying Allah five times a day and throughout the day and observing His laws and observing His hudud, His boundaries. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to ease our affairs and make our difficulties disappear. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, ease the difficulties of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ease the difficulties of the people in Sham. Ease the difficulties of the people in Afghanistan. Ease the difficulties of the people of the Muslim Ummah of in Burma. Ease the difficulties of the people in Bangladesh. Ease the difficulties of the people in Africa. Ease all the difficulties of all our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Syria, and in all the places in the world wherever they are being oppressed because they are observing your deen, Ya Allah, because they are striving to be good Muslims, because they are worshipping you five times a day, because they are accomplishing the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because they are trying to observe the sunnah that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left behind. Ya Allah, because of these reasons and because they worship you alone, Ya Allah, I ask you, I ask you with all your, the best of your names, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Ya Rabbana, Ya Rabbi, ease the difficulties of all our people, Muslim brothers and sisters, in all over the world. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bring out the best of the children and offspring from our Ummah so that they can become leaders. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give, give us the best in this dunya and the best in the Akhirah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adabanna. Rabbana khawfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina wa tawakkuna ma'al abrar. ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات عباد الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء الذنوب وإنهاء الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأخيرا